Kid in Florence, County. I really love it. It's Randy and Jason. And uh, thank you, JFL. We have a fantastic show. You guys today filled with comedians that we love, some comedians that you know, some comedians that you will love after you see them, right, right. Uh, and people we've worked with a bunch. This is it's such a joy to do. We can, we I know, and and we so appreciate everyone who tunes in and checks out as we talk to the top to allow people to come in, start watching this live broadcast. Uh, we are the Sklar Brothers. We have a podcast that we do a uh, daily called uh, Sklar Bro Country, the virus edition, where we break down what's going on in the world. We also have Dumb People Town. We are attracted to dumb behavior. And on, yes. on our podcast, uh, Sklar Bro Country, the virus edition, Randy and I, we were mentioning how we're getting to the edge of what is acceptable within these haircuts. Yeah, everyone's kind of at their haircut fringe, right? As it were. And Randy and I were remembering back to when we were little kids and our dad used to get his hair cut at a barbershop. Now, let's take a step back from that because barbershops, we get our hair cut now at salons as opposed to barbershops. Just because we're refined, as right. you can no, tell. No, no, no. Very a barbershop's amazing. Barbershop and salon, very different. Barbershop, you got like two or three guys who are not there to get their hair cut, who are just hanging out there to watch you get your hair cut and enter your conversation. So like, that's that is crazy to me. When you're getting your hair cut with you, you're imagining you're in a cone of silence with this person who's cutting your hair and you're like revealing personal things. You don't want Johnny old guy in the corner to have a couple comments on how you should handle your wife. Yeah. Because you don't know do that. You know it's going to start with you should lay hands on. Her. Nope. Nope. Barbershop is very different than a salon. Because I mean, you know, there are people, there's a lot of shit talking going on in a salon. Don't exactly. get us wrong. It's just not coming from three people who don't have anywhere else to be, who uh, aren't there for a haircut. So our dad, when we were little, used to go to a guy who used to, it was inside of a parking garage. Now, by the way, there's not just a guy wandering around with scissors in a parking garage going, let me cut your hair. No. He was a guy who had a, a hair, a barbershop that was inside where basically you get the keys if you valet park somewhere. It was like there. So a windowless dungeon of a barbershop. Sounds delightful, correct? And the guy who cut his hair was a German man named Klaus. Klaus the Barber. Klaus the Barber could describe any number of Nazis who killed many, many Jews. And by the way, this was like 76 we don't know where this guy was. Guy was in his mid fifties. We don't know where this guy was thirty years prior. In okay. your twenties, dude, you're in. Yeah. He could have been Klaus the Barber in the Judenrat, right? And that, and now he's Klaus the Barber, and that's his actual profession. Right. The other thing about Klaus the Barber is, and I guess we love this about him, and we probably shouldn't, is that he had a tank of piranhas. <laughs> like he was a James Bond villain. Like right. if you if you messed up the highlights magazines that were sitting out there, he you, he could you had feed to put a, a watch you put your hand in the force you to put your hand in the tank of the piranhas. Klaus the barber. That was where our dad and, and we always like in retrospect, I wondered why our dad would go to and and patronize clearly what was a Nazi. Yeah, let's just be honest. Let's just put all the cards to the table. And then later we because were like he didn't do a particularly good job. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't nice. He wasn't a great conversationalist and he wasn't a great barber. And he had piranhas. And he had piranhas. And our dad, and he was a Nazi. And our dad, we feel like, went to him because it gave our father power in that structure. It was right. like, you work for me now. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. You, you cut my hair, you fucking Nazi. That's right. How you like me now? So and now a little looking, off the side. And a little off the side. Now, looking back on it, it's a great power move by our dad. But when we moved to New York City in 1994, Jay and I started going to a barbershop down on West 4th Street, right around the corner from the Comedy Cellar. And it was, admit, it was a terrible barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like, you know how like when like you're in a barbershop and like no, none of the barbers speak the same language at all. And you're like, I, I, how do you communicate with each other? Like, I really don't know how anything gets done here. So we got our hair cut by this Italian man who was bald. And we couldn't tell if he was bald because he just went bald or his he cut his own hair so poorly that he had to cover up a mistake. Right. And Steve. It, Steve. We don't know his last name, but he was Italian. He was, <laughs> he was Italian. <laughs> and this is going to sound like we're doing a terrible Italian stereotype. It's going to sound like we we're doing a character from like Mario Brothers. But this is how he talked. We'd say, Steve, we're here to get your our hair cut. He was <laughs> like, I cut a you hair. Hey, I cut a you hair. I cut a you hair. I cut a you hair. I 
cut a you hair. Is he talking to the hair? I cut a you hair. Talk the to other, the hair because the hand ain't listening is like to be. Different. That's like an advancement of talk to the hand because the mouth ain't. Is it because the ears aren't listening? I don't know because the ears aren't listening. I cut a you hair. Cut a you and hair. he would always cut our hair. The other thing he'd say is we'd call up and we said, how late are you guys open? And they're like, we're open till eight. Come before eight. Like you, you're open till oh, eight. So we we'll, should come at 8.30? We'll come at 9.45. Is that cool with you? I open till eight. Come, come before eight. I cut a you hair. So we go down to West Forest Street. We get off and we go to the thing. And we start going to him for like two years. And the haircut is a $9 cut. $9 haircut, $1 less than Astor Place, which was just a bunch of shears. This guy actually took time to cut your hair. $9 cut, felt on the cheap side, but we were like, hey. And then as, once you get into it, you're like, well, we're probably keeping this guy afloat. We should probably keep poor going. people who are living in New York City, it allows you to give a, a 10% as, tip. Oh, as starting out comics, you're like, look, I give you 10 bucks. You take the dollar for yourself. I feel like a big shot. I get my hair cut. Done. Then, after two years of going there, it went under new management. We come back, and the haircuts are $7. Went from 9 down to 7 And I got to be honest with you, that upset us. We had to leave. We're like, we, we, I was like, when something is cheap, and then it gets, and you don't ask it to go cheaper, and, and it, it goes cheaper, that means he doesn't have to care about anything. He, how can anyone be invested in this? You can't complain about a $7. He just knocked that thing down. Right. Guy could like cut, cut your forehead, and you'd yes. be like, hey, man, I'm bleeding from my forehead. I cut a you forehead. Like seven bucks? I cut a you forehead. So we were just reminiscing about the good old days when you could go to a barber shop. I wonder where Steve is now. Dead. Okay. He is definitely dead. dead, but we are alive. This show is up and running. I feel like almost we should probably get rolling Let's into the show. In the show. We got so much show for you. That's what we do. Uh, we cut a you hair. We bring you the comedy. Uh, who's first, Rand? Hannah's first. Okay. This is a comedian we love. We're huge fans of hers. Uh, and she was great. She had a great Montreal Comedy Festival. Her first Montreal Comedy Festival was this past year, uh, JFL. And I loved her Letterman or her uh, Colbert. I said Letterman, but I meant Colbert. Her Colbert set was awesome. Same studio, the Ed go. Sullivan Theater. That's how old we are. Uh, give it up for Hannah Einbinder. Are you there? Uh oh. Hey, fellas. Hi. Hi. Johnny, old guy. I'll never stop laughing at that. Johnny old guy in the corner. Uh, but I, do, Johnny that, old guy. Have you been to a barbershop ever? There's like six people hanging out that don't have an appointment. Like, do you work here? Do you cut hair? Oh, you're Why just, are you I, here? You're just entering my conversation. There, I have, there's a barbershop on uh, Vine. It, there's a barbershop in Hollywood where whenever you pass it, there's massive windows. There's always a guy with like a, a steady cam type uh like handheld camera and he's just like getting someone doing like a shot it's very that's that's not a typical barber shop experience no, especially no. not a very classic gorgeous vivid one that you guys described but that is my barber shop so no piranha you're no, saying no, no piranhas, piranhas at this <laughs> not that i know not no, that and i you can't even call it a barber shop uh <laughs> all right we're gonna step aside we're gonna do some comedy and then we're gonna talk to you after this you know Okay, I have I have uh, just a question for you guys. Um, sure. It's sort of a choose your own adventure. I have some material. Yeah, it's that is stand up comedy, but I also wrote something. It's like a character piece, Ooh. and I'm wondering what you guys are feeling. Should we mix it up? Should I do? Maybe I'll do. I'll start with some stand up. I don't know. What do you guys? Start with stand up, and then maybe end it on the character a little bit. Stand up. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, uh, well folks, climate change is real mm -hmm. and it's here mm -hmm. and it's upon us. <laughs> and I think of humanity's relationship with earth like a relationship. Humanity is a toxic, abusive husband <laughs> and climate change is just earth filing for a divorce. <laughs> and you know what I say? Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine Earth on the 11th floor of an apartment building 
throwing humanity's shit out the window onto the sidewalk going, 4.5 billion years I put into this. And what, you think you could just pollute me without protection and then move on to another planet? Is that what you think? <laughs> go ahead, go, go ahead. You wanna go to Mars? Go to Mars, frack that bitch for all she's fucking worth. Which is nothing, by the way. She can't give you half of what I gave you. She don't even got water. Me, I'm 71% fucking rising thanks to you, you fucking bastard. <laughs> I'm fucking slick. So why don't you go ahead, you son of a bitch. I'm gonna be fine. Oh, I'm gonna be all right. You're just a blip on my fucking radar, sweetie. I got jellyfish twice your age. And so we're clear, when I told you I wanted you to fuck me, I didn't mean like this. Hey, <laughs> let the coronavirus hit you on the way out. <laughs> yes. So that's one joke. <laughs> that will we'll be so out of place uh, tonally in my act. Mm -hmm. um, we got that, and um, we got another yelling joke coming up, folks. This one is not quite finished, but let's do it. Um, <laughs> many actors and comedians are politically involved activists. Uh, many speak addressing judiciary committees, uh, Busy Phillips, Hassan Minaj, John Stewart, to name a few, and they're so articulate. If I spoke addressing Congress or the House, I don't think I'd be that delicate. I think I'd do it like an overly involved Little League baseball coach, just way too emotional. Like, I have to stand up for this. Do it. <laughs> Can you see me? Yes. I think I'd do it like an overly involved Little League baseball coach, just way too emotional, like, excuse my French, but what the frick are you guys doing out there? I don't have to be here right now, okay? You guys are dilly-dallying, noodling around, wasting my GD time, okay? I'm not being paid to be here, in fact, they were going to pay me not to come, but I'm here because I care about this team. Meriwether, hey, Meriwether, get off your phone. It's your job, and this is your team too. So why don't you freaking act like it? Whatever you do out there, boys and Lacey, you represent me, okay? tell you right now, boys, and Lacey, also you as well, your behavior freaking sucks. Yeah. Now let's get out there and play some ball. <laughs> I love it. Love it. So good. Um, usually people, you know, my stand-up is, is on this level. So these jokes are clearly um, representative of what I'm going through. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, I wrote a, I wrote a very quick joke uh, about James Bond. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go. Bup, bup, bup. Uh, I know that uh, masculinity by definition is toxic and I can prove it. Uh, James Bond. James Bond is a murderous sociopath, unfazed by his killing. Mm -hmm. And we're all like, now that's a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, the defense rests. <laughs> um, okay, this is a, a another one. Um, if if you're not familiar, um, in the Lord of the Rings universe, and wow, has that phrase been uttered by so many virgins, um, <laughs> the creature called Gollum is the end product of possession of the ring for 500 years. The creature known as Gollum was once a man 
named Smeagol. And because he's held the cruel power of the ring for 500 years, yeah. Smeagol is so deeply buried inside of him that Gollum is the monster he has become. Mm -hmm. I got this friend, Tracy, stay with me. <laughs> and when she dates, <laughs> she finds these 500 year old Gollum. And every time I'm like, girl, he's Gollum. <laughs> he's never gonna give you the ring. Mm -hmm. And she's like, girl, he's Smeagol with me. And I'm like, girl, yeah. <laughs> Smeagol is gone. And she's like, girl, <laughs> I am the one to bring him back. And I'm like, you know what, bitch, I'll see you in six months. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And then the 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 next one is a little longer. I don't know if I have enough time for it. The the character thing. I think that's great. I think it's good. Save it. We'll do it on. We'll I save this. It's There's so much there. First of all, I love. All, yay! I yay, love everything yay. you did. So funny. The little league coach thing is great. You're missing. You know, you you're out it. there in left field playing with your guy playing, knows what playing grab ass. <laughs> I playing grab, grab ass, ass with that guy. guy. You know, you're I want to go back. Let's before that. I want to go back to the fact that it's it is Mother Earth. So you're li you're making Earth a single mother when you leave her to go mm. to Mother. So yeah, it is Mother Earth, mm -hmm. so a female, mm -hmm. and in in many ways that Earth is it. Mother Earth. I just think that's like such a great thing that she's the Mars thing is so good. Mm -hmm. Bring Elon Thank Musk. You. Elon Musk, yeah, yes. let him take you up to Mars. Yeah, sure. She just, they don't have water. Elon. She looks, let Elon Musk introduce you to another planet. Yeah, fine. See how that works. <laughs> See how that works out. She's you want to run? Girl. You want to run along with your friend Elon? Yeah. <laughs> Wonder how that guy votes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I love that one. What else, Jay? Uh, I the the little league one is so fun. I just think obviously you said you're on your way. That can go on for so much longer because it's just such a great, it's a great, great, great bit. And it's and and you biting your lip about swearing with that is so funny. There's just so many great, great moments in that. I think you go further. More joke, more jokes about like what they're not yeah. doing, who they're up against. Guys, you guys want to beat the Russians? I don't know what you're doing. I mean, I really <laughs> oh don't. Oh my god! You guys want to beat oh, the Russians? Oh, that's so fucking good. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it doesn't even feel like you guys want to beat the Russians. And you know do what? You guys, do you guys the even Moscow, want to beat? <laughs> do you guys the even Moscow want to beat? Moscow Sputniks are kicking our ass. They're kicking our ass, and it doesn't. It doesn't you know what? Like, and you know what they're doing? You know what Putin's doing over there? He's laughing at you guys. You know what? And I don't. I don't <laughs> look, I'll tell you something. You don't have to win. I just got to see some effort out of you guys. I'm not seeing any effort at all. I don't care if you lose. If you try hard and you lose, that's fine. But I'm not seeing any effort. I'm not seeing any effort. Now go over there and get your Twinkies and orange slices and let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Senator, you, uh, Senator Feinstein's mom brought snacks. <laughs> <laughs> There's Twinkies and orange slices. And we got practice next Thursday on C-SPAN, all right? So don't miss it. <laughs> it's so, oh, good. so good. So good. Yeah, like what I'm looking for more in that bit uh, what I want to find more of is like um, ways to connect like baseball euf euphemisms and poli political euphemisms so that like yeah. I'm talking about one thing, sure. but it's applying like, to uh, both. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Striking out. Not trying hard, striking out, uh, swinging and missing. Uh, you guys just don't, yeah. your, your eyes aren't, your, your eye isn't even on the ball here, guys. You're looking yeah. over here and it's there. It's like, do you even want to be, this guy's, you know, pay attention. Get off your phone is so funny. That's just that's great. And oh, and thank lazy. you. I'm thinking maybe some something like um, something having to do with like uh, uh, Jason. You're only here because your dad used to like your dad was on the team. Like some some like yeah. Bush type uh, right, thing. Right. You're only here because your dad pulled some strings to get you here. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> you were, 
<laughs> your dad slipped me a 20 behind the trash can. That's right. That's right. Last week. Right. I love it. So good. So good. All of it is so good. Where can people find you and find your stuff and support you and watch you and listen to you? Oh, um, well, uh, I have a late night set. Yes. On, um, on YouTube uh, with material that you will be like, is this the same person? It's just night and day what you've heard no, now and what is what is there. But but uh, but um, yeah, but that's on YouTube. My name is Hannah Einbinder, so you can just search me there everywhere. I'm that's who I am. That's who I am wow. everywhere. We love it. We love seeing and I'm you. So, I'm so happy to see you guys. You guys were at the last show that I did before the quarantine at the satellite. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it is a memory I hold dear. Uh, it was so good to hang with you backstage, and I'm sure you. Yeah, we were it. nervous. They, that was our pre-Conan set, uh, like warm up, and that was mm -hmm. uh, you. It was really fun. To see that. that was great. Thank oh, you. Thank so you. Much people. love. Thank you following you. Thank great you. job, Hannah Einbinder. Thank so you, great. Hannah. I love her. She's great. I love it. I love how she commits and then because leaves room for like 20, 30 tags on a bit. Know. All right, right, shall we move on? Yes. I'm so excited about this next guy coming up. He's he's just one of our favorites. We work with him in the comedy store all the time. He was unbelievable on the show Workaholics. I loved his stand-up special on Showtime, most recent one. Uh, the dude is just one of our favorite comics out there. Uh, would you please welcome Eric Griffin? Eric Griffin, are you there with your brick? Yes! <laughs> there he is! <laughs> Well, take it away, and then we'll talk to you after after three minutes of solid. Oh, I don't know Eric. how can I how can I follow that all of that. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Give you it. I mean, Give Anna it. just like I didn't know we were going into the well of like, some of our newer material, but um, you know I don't know how you guys are doing in the quarantine, but you guys are both married with kids, and so like I my girl she's she moved in with me during the quarantine, so it's. Wow. I'm finding out a lot of things about being in a relationship like this. Like, it don't matter how long you've been in a relationship. When you get into a situation like this, you find out things about your 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 girl, your mm -hmm. wife, your girlfriend, whatever that you like. I'm finding out that women want to be in charge of our joy. <laughs> 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 like, they believe that the key ingredient to a man's joy is them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> And they and they and they want to be the source or directly in charge of how the joy is administered, <laughs> and anything else that is it that's not involving them is Satan. This is what I'm finding out right now. So like if I'm playing video games and she's like, "What are you doing?" I, I <laughs> what I'm not playing with you. So why are you having so much fun? So that's been. <laughs> <laughs> that's been interesting to uh you know uh, get used to but mm -hmm. you know one of the good things um what i've what i'm finding out is it you know it takes at the three-year point mm -hmm. and you've had a major breakup mm -hmm. and you've reconciled mm -hmm. and now you guys realize this is it you've committed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is when the female farting starts, which I didn't yes. know. Yes. This is at the three year point. And, and I'm not just talking about a cute little toof, you know, mm -hmm. swoosh, poof. Mm -hmm. No, no. This, um, she's calling in ships to the harbor. You know what I mean? Like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, it's like I, I looked, I stared at her for like eight minutes straight with a death stare, like, I can't believe <laughs> you farted like that. <laughs> this is, and you know, and don't you love me? Like she wants to like the door to be open to the bathroom now. It's just, it's a lot of things that I wasn't sure I was prepared for, but you know, it's like an accelerated uh, relationship process for everybody yep. out there. Yeah, that's what it really is. It's an accelerated relationship process. So, and you know, and some other things even about the quarantine that has been weird is like, mm -hmm. so like the toilet paper thing was like so crazy mm -hmm. that you couldn't get toilet paper. So I got one of those, it's called a tushy. It's a bidet, but mine's called mm -hmm. tushy. Yeah. So there's a knob on it, okay? All right? Mm -hmm. There's a knob, and then there's how how high you could turn the pressure. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's 1 to 10 is the mm -hmm. pressure. At 2 and a half, you could take paint off a battleship. So... <laughs> 
I don't know who's using the high pressure to have this laser beam of water destroying your butthole. Like, I just don't. I, I turned, I was like, well, I, ooh, that's, I sat down like, ooh, that would seem like it needed a little extra. So I turned, you know, I'm, I, the, 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 it almost <laughs> shot through my body. Just, just a real um, nightmare of a situation. So I don't know how people are doing out there with their toilet paper situation, but you know things seem to be okay. But like, and then like going to the store, like I, I went to this. See, the, the pro, this is what I have a problem with during the quarantine right now. It's like I don't like the mask police. All right, and yes, it's like everyone should wear a mask. That's cool, but you don't got to be in charge of when and where everybody's wearing a mask at all times. It's like you put a picture up on Instagram and then all the comments are like, where's your mask? Where's your mask? Like, I'm at home, bitch. Like, it's not your <laughs> choice. Mind your business about when I'm wearing my mask. You know what I mean? So like that part. And then like, then when you go to the store, like when I, like the first month, it was weird because, you know, you go to the store and like people are like, everybody's looking at you like you're crazy. So I think it should be some like quarantine store etiquette. So that mm -hmm. is move 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 my girl yes. she wants to browse you know she's like hey um what do you think of this cantaloupe i'm like rachel we need to go grab the cantaloupe and let's get the hell out of here you know what i mean and, yeah. and then and another thing too is like you need to be in charge of your bodily functions during quarantine mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you got to be in charge of your bodily functions all right you can't mm -hmm. like you can't be coughing and sneezing out at a store and not exactly. have an apologetic, you got to have an apologetic, like, I'm sorry, I just, yeah, I'm so sorry, you know? I'm yeah. at the store, and this chick just, I'm talking, you know, just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all her, and just laughing, and I'm like, hey, Sneezy <laughs> McGee, um, <laughs> let's, we in a quarantine right now, you, you know, yeah. you sneeze like that, it's like somebody yelled grenade, you know, you got to, like, <laughs> You gotta have control of your, your your bodily functions. But anyways, this is actually my first time doing one of these sort of like online yeah, you're shows great. like this. And it's just really I gotta say that, you know, it's really bizarre. I mean, I, I don't know how you guys are doing, but I am missing the the the, the we, human inter interaction of being at a club and being with the people. Totally. And, you know what I mean? It, it's it's, it's it's weird, it's different. But you know, we can, I, I, I do what I do. You know what I mean? No, you're great. Dude, that was fantastic. I love all that new stuff. And I think I have I have a pitch for you. So your sure, your girlfriend ahead. your girlfriend gives out joy. She wants to be the one to administer the joy, and she has all the joy and passes it out, and there is no rhyme or reason. It's like she's hoarding joy, like the US government is hoarding is hoarding COVID-19 tests. Right. You gotta drive through a Walmart <laughs> parking lot just to get it. <laughs> There's never enough. Uh, <clears throat> this is the other thing. She farted so loud and so long that I suddenly remembered that we were out of Ricola. <laughs> <laughs> Ricola? <laughs> Ricola, Ricola. <laughs> you know, the only guys are. Oh, Ricola. 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 You know, my girl has the same last name as you guys. That's funny to nope. think about. Really? Sklar? Yeah, yeah. she's a Sklar. No yeah, she's a Sklar. He farted so loud that we got a call from San Pedro. <laughs> like, yeah, stop it. You're ruining up the container schedule. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like, you know, when I first met her, she's just this dainty, like, you know, princess. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. you know what's funny about here, here's another thing about that goes on to that. What's funny about when you start first start getting into a relationship, like uh, or you start dating someone as a guy, like I didn't even know my girl had a period until we got into a relationship. You know what I mean? Well, she does because she's a woman. But I yes. know, but yeah. I know, but we never it never was involved. We never had anything to do we with it. We never had to engage with the period. Yeah, it, you maybe did. maybe it was like a like oh I'm oh I I'm on my period we can't do or but now it's like you know it, it never affected her mood until we started dating. <laughs> you know what I mean? She on her period now she has it twenty three days a month. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like I can't keep track of yours. Didn't you just have it? <laughs> uh, I 
I love it. Well, tell people how they can, because you've got podcasts that are amazing. We're going to jump on and do your soon. Griffin with Griffin. Griffin with Griffin. What are some other things people can check out and see your stuff? Because we love uh, it. Well, I'm just, uh, well, first of all, I'm doing two things, you know. So I got my podcast, Griffin with Griffin, which you can see. If you just go to ericgriffin.com, the links are there. It's like, you know, Eric Griffin comedy on YouTube. But what I've been mainly yep. doing recently is I'm gaming a lot. So you can also catch me on Twitch, Eric Griffin nice. Gaming. Eric Griffin what's your, Gaming. What's your game? What's your I've game? Play, I've been doing? playing a lot of Call of Duty, and I play with the fans, too. I play a lot with the fans. Mm. So if you, you come on my shit, channel, I, I, oh, yeah, it's really fun. So so you can catch Great. me at Eric Griffin Gaming on Twitch and YouTube, Eric Griffin Great. Gaming. So if you want to check that out, I got a bunch of things there. I play with a bunch of my friends and stuff like that, and I, I have those it. videos up. But listen, guys, thanks for doing this. I feel hey, you know man, what? I feel I feel a little bit normal again. I feel like a comic you a little normal. bit. Dude, I miss, I miss hanging out. I look forward to the days we can be in the back of the store just just hanging out together. I know, really buddy. Thanks, guys. you. See you later, Eric Griffin. Thank Eric you. Griffin, everybody. Look Sad, at that, man. In the high gear. He grabbed the jump. That was his first time. Doing a, a, a late night show. Yeah, let's say this. I want to mention that uh, you can donate to the artists if you want. If you go to tickly.co slash just for laughs, we suggest $5. Any of the people you see here, if you want to donate, go ahead and do it. If you just want to watch this as uh, a show that uh, entertains you, that's fine too. JFL has some other great shows uh, during the week on Tuesday nights. Uh, they got a killer show. Comedians making shit up. It up. Uh, an improv comedy show where they make up the comedy on the spot. It's really great. That's uh, same time as this. 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. East. And then Wednesdays, Wednesdays, characters welcome. Great character. Look, JFL, uh, Montreal Comedy Festival, always has great character shows. This is another great one, too. Uh, we got two more comedians. We're halfway through this show. I'm stoked. This is a great show. Yeah, we so could, much fun. We could end the show and you got your money's I'm worth, gonna, but we're not going to. I'm going to tell you the one quick joke that we came up with. Uh, you know who you'll never see on The Masked Singer? Who's that? Mike Pence, because he will not wear. A he mask. just doesn't wear a mask. Although he started to. Trump, I think, yeah, is right, really right, the right. one. Maybe I got to. Uh, all right, let's move to this next comic. He's uh, he's Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, although he's in New York City. I think he's uh, a New York comic. I saw his Tonight Show set. It was just so fantastic. Fucking his great. His energy age. was great. The jokes were great. I, I'm so excited to have him on this uh, show right here. Would you please welcome Nathan McIntosh? Nathan, are you there, buddy? Yeah. How are you guys? What's going on? We're, We're good, great. man. Thank you for doing this. And again, your your set on uh, on Fallon was unbelievable, man. Uh, thank you. I'm about to do it right now. Oh, okay. So uh, from the top, Jimmy. No, imagine I, I can I say this is also my first time doing one of these, and it's um it does make me feel like a, I, I miss this. I miss yeah. like waiting, e even though it's not like a stage. I'm in my own house, so if I bomb, I have to sit here for the rest of the night hating myself. You're but not gonna if, well, yeah, you don't know what I have. But sitting, <laughs> sitting here waiting to do this, I was like, "Oh, I remember this feeling. This, this yeah. is the this is the whole the thing I've been doing for years." Yeah. Okay. Well, it's nice to see you guys, and I thank you for having me. And uh, and just for laughs. Hi. Okay. I got. I'm just gonna look. Let's just let's just do these. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, guys, you guys don't even have chairs. I don't want you to. I don't want you to hurt your legs. I'm tired. Let's get over this. Um. I, I one of the, one of the things I found uh, pretty crazy about this whole uh, Corona deal is is that we really learned that every company is living basically like a divorced dad. Each every company is one missing one paycheck from being completely done. Like I should not have more money than United Airlines, <laughs> but here we are. I can buy groceries, and Delta is in a food bank line asking for tomatoes. That's crazy. Um, in that same the the uh, Peeps. Do you guys know there's a Peeps cereal, and it, and nobody buys it during the quarantine? Which I can't believe that Peeps. If you eat Peeps cereal for breakfast, what do you eat for dinner? Cocaine. There's there's no amount of anything that Peeps cereal is for people who are like, I would like to have a breakfast cereal that looks exactly like Ted Cruz. Is there a way that that is possible? Can I look at a bowl and see Ted Cruz's sharp face staring back at me through milk? Yes. I have, uh, I've been watching uh, documentaries, obviously, and cults, right? Cults. Who doesn't love a cult documentary? Perfect. Isn't it wild that every cult sort of starts off very good? It's just a person being like, hi, we're all gonna live here and we're all gonna farm and we're all just gonna live off the land. Everybody's like, that sounds 
pretty great. I don't know why I wouldn't do that. I'll do it. And then like two or three weeks go by and the guy's like, you know what? I, I'm going to fuck all of you. And they're like, <laughs> why? I just, I'm going to do that. So you guys line up and blow me and you keep farming the turnips and stuff, but everybody's going to blow me. We're still doing the regular stuff. And you're like, how? Why, why? I just, I will. What the fuck happened here? Every, every cult, every cult just like, it, it, it's so great. And then somebody just has to be like, you know, I could fuck these people. Cult leaders, honest to God, must look at their followers like they're just losers sometimes. You know, there's some just sad person wearing a sheet who's like, I gave up my whole life for you when I follow everything you do. And this guy's like, I, look, I, I'm, I, I was an IT manager six months ago and I just got some confidence. You suck, <laughs> but I'll take yeah. your money. You know, yeah. you're a complete yeah. loser. Um, <laughs> oh, I think we should change the name uh, Wife and Mistress should be flip-flopped because mm -hmm. it's very hot to marry a mistress. That just sounds mm -hmm. great. And if you flip those, nobody would want a wife on the side. It, nobody's cheating with a wife. Who wants to fuck a wife? <laughs> I implore you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on that, on this one, the last note here. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't it crazy that porn is free? It's free. It's completely free. You can't watch Moana for free. No. It is impossible. If you want to watch a Disney movie for free, there's FBI warnings and there's like that little star that comes on the screen. It's like if you want if you if we find out where you live, we will kill you and your entire family. But if you want to watch a woman put a table into her ass, it's free. <laughs> Which actually also happens in Moana. I don't want to spoil spoiler alert, I don't wanna ruin the end of Moana, but she goes to fight the giant volcano monster and she is forced to put a table in her ass. Oh, the God. Rock. I really wish I'd gotten to the end of that movie, you know, because... I know, I it. It. <laughs> uh, it's so funny, dude. Uh, so good. I, oh, thank the you. The, the companies as divorced dads is so funny, like, because, like, supermarkets are kind of like divorced dads, too. It's like, wait, you guys don't have anything. You don't have toilet paper here? Yeah, that's funny. what I was You don't have <laughs> There are any basic essentials, yeah. You just have raisins? Like, that. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck is going on in your fridge? And then you, you're like, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because if passengers are like their children, they've been neglecting us for years. Yes. That's really funny. Yeah, that's really, really funny. It is the truth. That is such a, such a great bit. I love it. And the cult thing is just so fantastic. I, I all, Every cult starts out with like, yeah, this, he's got some really good ideas. He seems yeah. so Weird. good. It's it goes so quickly from you've got some really good ideas to where is he putting his finger? <laughs> yes, all of them. It's just wild. But why does it always go there? It's like that's what I mean. I guess that's what the cult leader started it for. He's like, yeah, yeah, people come in here for the turnips, and then I'll yeah, fuck so them. I turn them out. Is what turn, I do. They, they come for the turnips, <laughs> and I turn them out. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Uh, Feel free this, to use any of it. Use it. Use it. Use it. Uh, where, where can people? Uh, this is so good, dude. I, the, the thank you. This is so much fun. I, I, yeah. This is so much fun. Um, uh, at Nathan McIntosh on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and uh, I got a podcast called Positive Anger that you can find everywhere. Dude, I love it. We're gonna have you come do our podcast or call in and and do Dumb People Town with us. I'd love to. Thank you so much. And if you want to talk sports, I don't know how big of a sports fan you are, but if you want to talk sports, we can do it on our sports podcast as well. But if you're talking good. sports currently where there are none, I'm a huge, I know everything about sports. There you go. Done. Every Beautiful. single thing that's going on right now. Say no more. <laughs> but I would love to. I really appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's so much fun. Thank you, Just for Last. Yeah. So awesome. funny, dude. Nathan oh, my gosh. All right. Of course, the Canadian with. thanks. Just for laughs. He gets it. He understands. He knows where the bread is buttered. And also, he brought the heat from Canada. He brought the heat. He had the jokes. I love that he just made it seem like it was just a piece of paper. That's not just a piece of paper. That's loaded with comedy gold. Uh, we should let people know that uh, next Thursday, we're doing a headlining set of comedy as well at the Nowhere Comedy Club. Can we say that? Can yeah, we, we can mention that. that. Yeah. We're doing that. If you want to see us do a full set, Daniel Van Kirk, who did this uh, many, many weeks ago. That's right. Our, in our first week, he's in our co-host from Dumb People Town is going to do a 20-minute guest set on that show. That's next Thursday at 7 p.m. Nowhere Comedy Club. If you go to eventbrite.com and look up Night of a Thousand Sklars, you'll get a chance to see us. We're already selling a bunch of tickets. I think there's only a handful. They of cap it. So if you want to come see it, we'd love to have you. 
Uh, we got one more comic on this show. And I love this guy so much. We take him on the road with us. Uh, every time we come into Minneapolis, he performs with us. He uh, made a run on Last Comic Standing. And uh, he's one of our favorite people to go out and perform with because he, uh, whenever we pitch him a suggestion, he tries it right away. And he always gives us great tags. Yeah, he's a great on. writer, a great joke writer, and then also just a fantastic hang. Let's bring him on the show right now and close this thing out the right way. Nate Abshire, Nate, how hey are you? Guys. I love that you are still standing. We don't have to go too deeply into this, but you are, <laughs> there's a riot happening around you. We can talk about it after, you're right. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm in Minneapolis and uh, it's it's wild. Right. Okay, well, let's try and bring some levity to this situation, not that situation, but the world right now. You're one of our favorite people to do comedy. Go Have at it and we'll talk. Thank you very you. much. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here, man. I, uh, I, the quarantine has been a little nice for me because I feel like everyone else's appearance is slowly edging towards mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> people, cause now people see me, they're like, Oh, you couldn't get a haircut. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's something, it's something I get all the time. Everywhere I go, people tell me that I look familiar. Or I remind them of someone. And I think what everyone's trying to say is that a lot of dudes have let themselves go. <laughs> because it's never positive. Like, I've never followed up on it, and it's been good. Like, one time I asked the dude, I was like, yeah, where'd you see the guy that looked like me? And he goes, well, he was trying to fight a red box. <laughs> and then he just keeps going. He's going to... He was real upset about something. I don't even know if it was movie rental related, but the last thing I heard him yell was, give it to me, you big red bitch. And so I'm stuck in this conversation and I'm trying to get out of it. So then I say to the guy, well, then it sounds like it was movie rental related. <laughs> but he goes, well, here's the thing. His wife was next to him and she was sunburned. So <laughs> who knows, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people. We're moving on to the next joke. <laughs> um, Move it. Move it. A lot of people think that marijuana makes your short-term memory worse. I'm not convinced that it does. I think what it does is it just increases the satisfaction you get when you remember something you forgot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because when you remember something sober, that's not an event. No. You know, you remember something sober, and it's like, oh well, I should have known this the whole damn time. But you remember something stoned, and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, look at me remembering shit. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Pop-Tarts. That's why I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> I came in here for Pop-Tarts. Oh, shit, there's one in the toaster already. This is amazing. <laughs> I am living in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A girlfriend of mine once wanted to, hey, this is what she said to me, uh, sort of out of nowhere. She, she goes, you know, when we get our own apartment, what we should do is we'll get a bowl, fill it with condoms, put it on the nightstand. That way we never have to look for one when we want to do it. And at this point in the relationship, a little backstory, we had not talked about moving in together at all yet. So I was a little taken aback and I'm scrambling to come up with something to say. And what ends up coming out of my mouth as I feel the timer running down, I go, uh, you think we're going to be living together and still wearing condoms? <laughs> <laughs> you guys get that was incorrect. I found yeah. out very quickly that yeah. was not the right thing to say because she got so mad. Mm -hmm. She got so mad at me. She goes, <laughs> she goes, I'm, I'm not just some breeding horse. You can't just put me on medication because you don't want to wear condoms. And I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> easy there. Settle down. What's got you all riled up? Did you see a snake? Who wants an apple? Come on. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, I like telling that joke. I think it's funny, but I never want to come across like I don't respect women because I do. I have the most respect for women. I think that they are strong, beautiful majestic creatures and i would never want to disrespect them or come across wrong so i asked a female comedian friend of mine about that joke i was like should i stop doing that one and she goes oh you mean the one where you call women horses <laughs> I was like okay right out of the gate um 
<laughs> she got so mad at me she couldn't even form words. She was just like. <laughs> Yes. How are we doing on time? Are we? We're good. I mean, you want to do one more or you, whatever you want. Uh, and that's, that's good. Let's, let's just talk. talk. Let's, let's just talk. talk. All right. All right. All right. So, dude, first of all, thank you. Thank you for. Bringing yeah. Me. Thanks for having me. I was, I've been so excited about this for a month and a half. Uh, yeah. You are, again, one of our favorites to work with. There are moments we'll go on stage and we're like, we'll go on, we'll watch your set before we go on and we're like, well, we're not going to be able to follow that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so nice of you to say. That's great. Uh, no, but just again, your writing has gotten so good. I think it's, it's always the test of if you're loving the most recent stuff that you've written. That to me is always like, you're like, okay, I'm heading in the right direction. And I feel like that's the case with you. You have loved the most recent stuff that you've come up with. I feel like you, everyone's always getting better, right? Like the more you oh, keep writing, oh, right? It's hard. You hope that that's the direction you're going. All right. And it's not always easy. I know you're in the middle. I mean, are you, talk to me about, is there writing happening around you right now? Uh, it's not the epicenter where I'm at. It's around me, not like, I mean, it's uh, where I am, it's fine. My house is fine. Um, most yeah. of the burning in Minneapolis is like not residential districts. Right. Um, it's mostly commercial stuff. And, yeah. uh, you know, without doing a whole TED talk about it, like the spirit in Minneapolis right now is very like, like people are going out during the day and cleaning up. Oh. Like yeah, there's like just huge teams of people going out with trash bags and cleaning up debris from fires and sweeping up broken glass. Wow. And not, yeah, and not even mad about it. Just like, a, well, it sucks that our police department is full of white nationalists and this yeah. is the price that we're all paying for it. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. At least to hear a little bit of that. I it's know nice it's to hear because we're not seeing any of that. Like, that No, part. you don't see any of it no. in the news, right? No, yeah. no, we're seeing just chaos. I mean, uh, this is the truth. And you know us and you know how we behave with our kids and whatnot. I, I really do think it starts with how you treat your kids. If mm -hmm. you tell your kids, be nice to everybody and respect all people of every kind, unless they do something to make you disrespect them, like disrespect somebody else. If you start at the level where you respect everybody, then we're not here. We're not at this place. Right. And that's, that's what we tell people. All the time. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. How can people follow you? How can people uh, uh, get your album? All get your stuff. album and stuff. Yeah, let it let people know. Yes, uh, album's not finished yet, but it will be out on eight hundred pound gorilla uh, right. soon. Right. And uh, I'm Nate Abshire on everything. I'm also on Twitch sporadically. Uh, nice. My tw my Twitch is uh, Naderade Shire. Okay, which is a long word. Uh, <laughs> what What's your word? I, sorry, what? What game do you play mostly? Um, mostly, I've actually been playing a lot of Call of Duty, um, mm -hmm. Modern Warfare. Warzone is the the mode that a lot of people are playing. Play a lot of that. Um, also, I just won. Brian Miller and I just won the Coast to Coast Roast from Helium oh, Presents. Oh, nice! Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It was a twenty four city roast battle where we roasted each other's cities over no. like a. Yeah, Dude. yeah. Makes total sense. You are such a great writer. Keep doing it. We look forward to the day when we can get back on the road with you and do another great weekend. And somewhere. please let us know when the album is done. We'll have you on the podcast and promote awesome. it. I, I would say, what's the title of the album? Do you know what that is yet? I don't have that yet either. I've really okay. been struggling with that. Call okay, us. We'll call call us. We, we'll, love this. Right, we love that kind of stuff. And hopefully maybe we'll see you at a future uh, JFL festival. That would be awesome to hang that with That would you. be great. Thank you guys so much. Nate Abshire, Nate everybody, Abshire. look at that. Unbelievable. Love it. Again, one more time, we're going to tell you a couple more shows you can watch on Tuesday. JFL does Comedians Making Shit Up, up. at Improv Comedy Show, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's great. And then Wednesday, Characters Welcome. They do a great character show, really funny character stuff, 5 p.m., 8 p.m., 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I want to thank uh, Spencer Griffin for running tech on this thing. Thanks so much, buddy, for helping for us put it helping together. us book it and put it together. We want to thank JFL for booking the show. We want to thank Bruce Hills for believing in us and giving us a chance uh, to do what we do next Thursday night, June fourth. NowhereComedyClub.com. 
Uh, you can check out and find ways to uh, see us. And then uh, check out our daily podcast, Scarborough Country, the virus edition. If you want to check that out, it's available wherever you get podcasts. We're at, at Sklar Brothers on Twitter and on Instagram. You can see clips of the podcast if you want to check it out there. Uh, we just really appreciate that we get a chance to make you guys laugh and hopefully just take a minute to breathe because there's some heavy shit going on around us right now. Anytime you're in a tough spot in the coming weeks where personally it's hard for you or the world's anxiety is coming down on you, just remember one thing. Hey, I'm cutting you hair! We're out. See you guys.